Okay guys, this is Cruz Roy with his Phantom Clone project. Kind of calling it the Phantom Steam. Uh, I did a quick video of it already flying, hovering, after I did the NASA and I upgraded it to the V2. This is a V1 light and I upgraded it to the V2. So it has all the options the V2 has. Um, but I kind of prematurely flew it without showing everybody the finish product. Um, I had it all mishmashed before in the photographs, so now I'm going to do a video. Um, what I got here is like a brain 4-in-1 ESC, so I do not have ESCs in the arm. Um, so I had to add high-tech LED lighting and solder them all in in conjunction. So when you power up the bird, the lights come on, so it kind of simulates a Phantom. Like I said, Phantom clone. Uh, I'm running a Futaba receiver a standard uh, RX instead of the S-Bus and the NASA Lite. The NASA Lite has the PMU and the GPS option and also has now been upgraded to the V2 version 2. All right, And it's running, these were some Iris um, motors that I picked up for $3 a piece when 3DR was having a big sale so I figured I'd use them. Uh, the 4-in-1 ESC has like 10 feet of wire on it plus the iris motors have another 10 feet so I, I literally cut the wire shorter and resoldered them to the 4-in-1 ESC board which you can't see it's right up underneath the NASA and the Futaba the only thing I got issues with I got the board offset it's not exactly centered to the drone like most people do I don't think it's an issue I just have to get my numbers proper in the software so it recognizes it and where it is and I have external LED and I cut a few notches in the body for the external LED and also the GPS I used the puck holder from NASA and I drilled a hole through the top of the roof because there was no way for some reason this clone body or it's because of the ESC in the way that I have no squish room here I also 3D printed a base plate for underneath everything so the battery fits comfortably perfect the 3500 iris battery fits perfect right in this area here for this bird so it worked out very well to 3d print my own base plate originally I was using the electronic base plate that came with the clone body but I printed something else to drop it down at least about 10 millimeters it dropped down so now I could get pretty much everything in here but I still have a cluster of wires from the LED. Um, I really don't want to cut into these and make them shorter so they're kind of looping around and um, I have to do the same thing with the GPS but what I'll do right and then I put in an XT60 connector on here so I can actually use phantom batteries if I want to as well but I have a lot of those iris batteries that I picked up for three bucks a piece. Um, so these motors are the clockwise and counterclockwise motors from the iris they have the thread on props I have um, I got these set of props they're a little marked up from the iris but I'm gonna refile them down and balance them so I had those laying around this was just a project of things I had hanging around to see if I could actually come up with a project that flew and my two drones are purchased as a Phantom and an Iris, I wanted to build one from the ground up. I built a 250 racer and I sold it, kind of small and fast, had no need for it. So I figured have another one and see how it is to build a Phantom. So let me uh, zoom in and get a better look at the guts here. Let's see if I can point them out to you. Okay, so you have the NASA Light V1 with the optional GPS. So I have GPS on this. The board is all integrated with the ESC. It's a Quattro 4-in-1 ESC 25 amp. So it gives me 25 amps for the iris motors. And I'm using a Futaba standard RX 
and it did work out that I could get all the controls to work properly. Uh, every video out there is for the S-Bus system, which I didn't want to pick up another receiver. I already have a few of these laying around. I had the NASA laying around, brand new in a box. I never used it for anything. And the motors are brand new for the Iris. The body's brand new. So they're actually all brand new parts. It's just I didn't need them. I figured I would crash or anything. And the only thing that I'm going to be using that's used is the Iris propellers. Let me back up a little bit. I'll be using a set of Iris props. Um, and also on the landing gear, the clone body comes with the similar landing legs that a regular Phantom 1 and 2 has. But I said to myself, I really don't want that. So what I did is I drew these up on onshape.com and I saved it as an STL and these are little mini stubby legs. I'm not going to run a camera on this. This one's just for flying around and if I want to put a camera I'll put a keychain on the top or you can mount a Morbius or whatever right to the top but this is the little stubby legs just to give you an idea. I did a picture on the forum but this is the finished product. I mean I need to do a little bit of sanding but they're pretty tough and they're just going to keep the bird up approximately about two and a quarter inches off the ground just enough to keep the belly up alright so basically now I'm just going to throw it together with all the screws back together I gotta to do some tucking you know it's pretty amazing how much stuff is in a drone so I'm gonna get it all tucked together I'll turn the video back on and give you a look at the completed project uh, with the landing legs on it and the props so you can take a look at it. I'll be right back in a few minutes. Okay guys, I'm back. I put everything back together. I forgot to talk about the controller. The controller is pointing towards the battery door and so is the puck. Someone asked me that question about how it was jiggling but I didn't do the compass dance yet. I haven't been outside. Inside it's kind of tough to do the compass dance. It's very windy out there today. No way am I doing this. I don't want to break this little guy right off the bat. But what I'm going to do is this is my Fataba radio, the 8FG. Like I said, I was talking about um, 3DR Robotics was selling these batteries very cheap because the Iris 2 doesn't take them anymore. These were for the Iris, not the Iris Plus. So 3,500 milliamp batteries, 111 volts. I do not know what the run time on this will be. Like I said, custom built with all spare parts I had hanging around. The Phantom Steen. But these... Uh, Batteries seem to just work just right. So let me engage it before I touch it. And I'm going to push the battery in. It fits really comfortably in there with that board that I printed. And I'll show you the differences between this. The uh, Phantom clone door is way different than the uh, Phantom. I bought this body thinking I could use it in my Phantom, but to tell you the truth, it would have never worked with all the other batteries I have. It's a lot narrower, but wider. So it takes a whole different battery if you ever think about buying this clone body. Um, it's cheap, but it doesn't work well. And I just wanted to show you, just like a Phantom, it has the LED lights, even though the ESCs are not in the arms. The EAC is right here. The center of gravity is where all the weight is on this bird. It's all right here in the center. Uh, but I did put high-tech LED lighting and soldered it to the ESC board. Um, and these are the printed legs I made. Give me an idea. Flying in the air, just stubby little feet. You know, just enough to land. I could actually put something, I still have enough room for a Mo Mobius, I could print a board here. Uh, speaking of which, not only did I print the legs, but this comes with a circuit board, which I didn't like too well, and I don't know if you can see too well in there, 
see if I can get a little light on the subject but there's a green board in there that I printed and it helps the battery fit perfectly in there and um, it helped push everything down because there's not a lot of room in here to stuff all that all the things you want to stuff in there you know so like I said the battery is actually the front of the bird I'm gonna put um, the red tape here that came with the clone these are iris propellers they're actually a lot bigger than the phantom has these are a 9 5.5 and they're actually clockwise and counterclockwise spin off and on what I'm gonna try to do is spin it up for you but I need to move the camera need to back the camera up a bit so I don't hit the props alright so the NASA software is going to work the same way alright I set up all the switches like if I drop this switch ten times the LED will blink yellow or steady yellow for the calibration dance but for right now I'm going to show you that it all works and the only thing I noticed the only thing I noticed with the upgrade of the NASA software is that just above 50 is where it engages the props. So it's very touchy right there, but that's the way your DJI Phantom radio would be in the center neutral stick when you do that. So it's working exactly. It may seem weird, but it's actually working the way it should be. Uh, like I said, I haven't test flown it yet. I haven't test flown it yet, but I noticed with the V1 software, you actually had full control of the throttle. Right from the beginning, you, it would actually accelerate. When you upgrade to the V2, it doesn't start accelerating until after the midpoint which if you really think about it on your if you had a phantom uh, one two or even three or pro possibly the four when you engage the props it's at idle speed and then the stick is in the middle and you start accelerating from there for your attitude adjustment and GPS so I just wanted to show you guys this the build the winter build of the phantom steen um, I'm hoping to have a, a good video of a flight soon when the wind dies down but just to give you another oversee it's pretty thin it kind of looks like the Phantom X you've been seeing on YouTube so but this is Cruiseroy with the Phantom Steen just bunches of pieces put together to make something fly Hey guys, this is Cruz Roy with the Phantom Steen. I'm going to do a little lift off outside. I did the GPS calibration and it's showing a 1, 2, 3 uh, green light, which seems to be good. And But see the wind, it's very windy, so maybe I'm taking a chance, but I wanted to try it out. So, let's take a look. The only thing I don't like is this throttle, like the Phantom. There I am at 50%. It's like 52% and she goes to that throttle. Because like your Phantom is spring loaded so it goes to the center. So let's try it. Very windy. Even got the dead branches in front of me. I am getting a little quiver out of it. Like I didn't punch in all the numbers yet into the NASA software. Still running all zeros. I just wanted to give it a try. Now it looks like I'm getting a low battery. So 
so I guess the battery wasn't charged enough but it's kind of windy I don't feel like taking a chance but that was just a quick try so this is Cruise Roy with the Phantom Steam you got a clone body nozzle 1 upgraded to a V2 printed skids iris motors and props and a 4-in-1 ESC and a Futaba uh, radio system. This is Cruz Roy and I'm out of here.